Hey guys, welcome to uh, an overcast Friday. Um, I'm not going to put this video in the sequence, so I mean, we record everything we do on the property and we release them um, um, every week. We kind of bundle it into a short video and release it every week. So to that end, we're probably about three to four weeks ahead of what gets released online. Um, this video is about the uh, Cree Konaha grant, uh, so I am not going to put that in the sequence because there might be people that aren't terribly interested. So yesterday I was removing the roof off the back kitchen, but you won't see that for three or four weeks. I might give you a sneaky look. There we go in that house. I will just come across here to get a little bit of a background. Whoa! And we've cut through to the field. There we can see some of the work that's going on. Anyway, sneak peek. I might just answer some questions we've been getting. A lot of people have been interested in our experience with the Cree Konaha grant, how we got on, what it's about, does it apply to you, and how best to move forward if you want to do the same thing. Um, I think the, the grants are phenomenal. I can't understand why more people aren't doing them. Um, I would love to do a second house under the grant. It's gonna be maybe three or four years away. <laughs> I don't know if the grant's still gonna be running then. But I think it's very, very positive to restore these wonderful buildings to their natural um, environment. And just, you know, new houses are brilliant. I've had a new house for the last 15 years, but there's something really nice about these properties and how they were built. Families would have come together, neighbors would have come together. They were formed what's called a mehel in Irish, which is a group of neighbors to accomplish a particular task. Um, a common one would have been uh, farmers coming together for silage mehel. So it's when the silage season hits, all the farmers will descend on one field, cut that silage. The next night they might go to another field and so on. They all work together. So when it comes to building these houses, they wouldn't have used architects, engineers, spe specified tradespeople. Like the knowledge would have been shared. It would have been a common knowledge. Um, and there's that thing that's missing, I think, from uh, our culture. I'm not too sure if it exists in like Spain, Portugal, or Eastern Europe, but certainly in Ireland, we got caught up with the Celtic Tiger and we, you know, forgot how simple, how easy it is to restore these properties. And so that's one of my ambitions with the Creek on a grant. I want to do as much of the work myself. So the grant, I feel the level of funding in the grant is enough that you can buy a house if you can afford it. Um, the grant should be able to cover everything for you. So, oh no, I dropped my notes. I made notes. So let's see, I'm gonna be changing my hand a little bit cause it's a bit uncomfortable. Let's go with this. So let me tell you about the grant. So it came about last year, 2022, Cree Konaha. Um, I don't necessarily know the direct translation. Cree is your heart or to love and Konaha is to reside or your home. So maybe love your home, love your place of living or love your house. I'm not sure, but it's, it's a nice title. Um, originally, Creek Onaha was set up to um, address what was considered a blight on the aesthetics of towns and urban areas. You know, if there was an old derelict building, they'd give a grant for someone to come in and fix it up. Uh, so that was the original plan, I think, and it only applied to cities, towns and urban areas. That came out, I think, around 2022. However, not many people actually took up that offer 
of the grant, surprisingly. Presumably it was because it was, you know, if you're talking about a derelict house in the middle of Dublin or in Cork, you know, you're still talking about hundreds of thousands to purchase it. And then a grant of 30,000 or 50,000 really wasn't making that much of a difference in the overall bottom line. So the grant wasn't taken up. Towards the end of 2022, um, the scheme was extended to rural areas and areas outside of towns and cities. Um, and I believe at that point, there still wasn't a huge take up there. I think maybe within four months of extending it to rural areas, there was maybe about 600 or 800 applications nationally. I think something like this um, with about two thirds of them approved. And the bottom line with that was still at the grant levels, it wasn't enough to make a considerable difference to the cost of renovation. So more recently, um, in early 2023, up until around April, May, they increased the grant limits by about 15, 20%. That was the first big change. Second big change was they allowed you to purchase the house and rent it out. Whereas previously you had to be the tenant to qualify for the grant. Now you can actually buy the house, renovate it and rent it for a period, I think five years. I'll come to that in a minute. So the latest grant levels were increased. Um, it's 50,000 for a vacant home. It's 70,000 for a derelict home. If you want to, like this is only two days old now, I saw mo most recently, if you want to develop a property that's on one of our 30 identified offshore islands of Ireland, they'll add another 20%. So you can get 60,000 euros for a vacant home on one of our offshore islands or 84,000 euros for a derelict home on an offshore island. And I believe this is also uh, whether you want to live there full time or whether you want to rent the property. I mean, that is remarkable funding. And unlike some of the other funding opportunities in Ireland, like the SEAI grants, where you have to have a contractor and they escalate the sites, this grant is really, really good in that you can do the work yourself and you can buy your materials yourself. So you can really control the costs and help budget it a little bit if you're that way able to do it and if you're anyway interested in DIY and there's no reason why you shouldn't be because these houses these really old cottages and farmhouses like that's how it was built 100 150 years ago really simple technology really simple houses really honest houses you know they might get a grand design but they don't have to get a grand design just they need to get a really simple roof bit of insulation some windows and it's a very comfortable house for very little so that's the history of the grant. Next thing I'll talk about is eligibility. So to be eligible, it's pretty simple really. You either need to make it your primary, your principal primary residence. That means you have to move into the house. You have to live there for 10 years, or you have to rent it out um, to a tenant and have that tenancy registered on our Irish system, the Rental Tenancy Board. You gotta have, that for five years and you got to provide proof to the local county council that you have a valid tenancy each of the years so you got to submit this five times or i suppose they'll start to look to recoup some of their investment and if you decide to sell your house if you're living there you'll have to re recoup some of their um the grant funding like i presume it's like 10 percent a year so if you get 50,000 and you sell the house within nine years, you maybe have to pay back 5,000 or thereabouts. And this will be written into your, um, into the deeds itself, which you may have to talk to your mortgage provider about because they'll have, um, they'll have a right to some of this as well. So you'll have to balance that. So that's eligibility and it's, it's, it's open to anybody, Irish, if you're 
if you're a worker, a foreign worker coming over here, or if you just want to come over and help restore Irish properties. I don't think there's an issue um, with you applying, but you know, do your own research. This isn't this isn't an official announcement. <laughs> I don't work for the government or anything. I research this extensively and I'm just telling you what I think to be true, so do your own research. Okay, next point is vacant versus derelict. So um the grant supply to vacant or derelict houses, uh, a vacant house is pretty much one that somebody hasn't lived in for a period of time. And the derelict house is something that's unsafe to live in. In both cases, this grant is to help you to bring this house up to a habitable standard um, insofar as is possible. There are some things which you know, there are building regulations which you absolutely should attempt to comply with. But for some things like stairs, you know, the stairs in a lot of these houses, they wouldn't be compliant with building regulations. So the onus isn't on you to make it compliant. It's just to bring it back to a habitable standard. And I think given the nature of our vernacular properties, there's, there's a bit of wiggle room that as soon as you become approved or start the process, I would advise you to make very good friends with the planning officers and the people that'll be helping you out so that you can ping them off an email just to double check things every now and then. So the other thing I came across recently is the grant is for those who would live in it. This was the way, but recently um, it was opened up so that you can buy a property and rent it out. The really nice thing about this is you can get the grant twice. So if you went down the lines of buying two properties on an offshore island, you would get 84,000 euros if it was derelict for the first property and you live there. You buy the next door neighbor property and you get another 84,000 for that. So you could get up to 170,000 from the government, which is brilliant. So you can get the grant twice. That's one thing to cover. Okay, my ne next point, I think that's point five. I do tend to ramble a little bit. I'm sorry for that. I seem to have cut my nose with my safety goggles yesterday. Anyway, so fifth point is what do I got to do to qualify? So to qualify for a vacant home, your house has to have been built. Um, or sorry, I'll come to when it's been built. It has to be vacant for two years at least. Now, if you own the property, you should be able to show vacancy by an absence of utilities. So if you have gas or if you have electricity and if they were cut off five or 10 years ago, you can use that to demonstrate vacancy. If you don't own the property, a letter from an auctioneer is all you need. So in my case, we wanted to have our grant approved before we closed on this house. So we put down a deposit on this house. Um, essentially, we went sale agreed. We got a letter from the auctioneer saying that we are sale agreed on this property and they confirmed that it hasn't been lived in for, I think it was three years at least. And this was enough for us to qualify for the vacant grant. Um, another thing you have to do is ensure the house was built before 2008. Um, I'm just checking. Yeah, you have to qualify that it was built before 2008, and ours was. Ours was built. Well, there's a funny story. We, we, my wife was excavating some of the um, plants in the front of the house, which was a flower garden, and she found an old ruin, which I suspected was there because on the six-inch first uh, edition. OS map of Ireland, it does show a property there, but on the second edition, it doesn't. It shows this house, sorry. Anyway, more on that in a different episode. So we have to confirm the house was built before 2008. Again, the same letter sufficed from the auctioneer to say it was built. And in the same letter, she, she ensured that we were sale agreed and proceeding with the uh, purchase. Um, if we live in it, we have to declare that we're going to live in, in the house at the end of it. And that was fine. We just told them our own house was up for sale and we were going to live there. And we signed that declaration. 
um, down the line you may need a tax clearance certificate you will need to pay local property tax this hadn't been paid local property tax in the last three years so that kind of it didn't slow down the final sale but um it was brought up from the solicitors and they paid it and they gave us confirmation that it was paid but i think we still had to wait for a day or two for it to show up on the systems as the local property tax was paid and the final criteria for eligibility is you should not be a company um, or a developer involved in developing these properties um, that's the general eligibility that you need in order to proceed i don't know why it's not written down here but Maybe I'll get to that in a minute. Yes, I'll get to that in the application process. I will talk a little bit about what it means to be derelict. Okay, so I'll just talk about the grant. So as it stands now, considering there's been two revisions, but as it stands now, the grant is worth 50,000 euros for a vacant home and 70,000 euros for a derelict home. And as I say, if it's on an offshore island, the grant is 60,000 euros for a vacant home and 84,000 for a derelict home. How do you use that money? Well, in my case, and I'll talk a lot about my case, I plan to use that money um, primarily for, I'm doing all the work myself, so I plan to use that money for materials. So when I purchase materials, I'm roughly keeping track of my spreadsheet so I, I buy them all from one building provider just to keep it simple but i'm roughly saying right these materials here are for the foundation these materials are for the roof and these materials are for the kitchen let's say i'm doing that because you have between 50 and seventy thousand to spend on demolition if you need to hire a jcb or something to come in i don't I'm doing it with a shovel. Watch the videos. You will see my pain. Um, if you want to do the subfloor, there's another fifty to 70000 you can spend there. Now, that doesn't mean you get to spend 50000 on demolition and 50000 on the subfloor. You have a maximum of 50000 So you can choose to spend 10000 on demolition, 10000 on the subfloor, uh, 10000 on the superstructure if you want. But you can spend up to fifty to seventy thousand on demolition, fifty to seventy thousand on the substructure, which is all the flooring, fifty to seventy thousand on the superstructure, which is the walls and roof, and fifty to seventy thousand on services for things like heating, water, uh, electricity, and so forth. Worth noting, though, if you want to put a air to air to water, air to air ground to air any sort of combi boiler like that and there is a grant covered by seai as far as i know you cannot use it i have heard people trying to like write a letter saying that they promise to not use the seai grant but in my case i'm just not going to use those boilers personally and this is my opinion i don't think you see your money recouped from using an air to air air to water or ground to water i think it'll take about 10 to 15 years you're not going to get a passive house with one of these things so it'll take about 10 to 15 years to recoup your initial investment on the cost of those boilers and at that point you have to buy a new one so for me it's not a big issue i'm not going to be putting in those sort of boilers into this property um so then you look at right how what heating can i put in under this grant and I mean, you don't have to use anything on heating, but for me, I'm going to use electric heating here. So electric radiators, maybe infrared system or maybe electric on the floor. So they're not covered by an SEI grant. Therefore, I can use them here. Uh, air to water, ground to water system is covered by an SEI grant, so I cannot use them here. Same with solar panels. They are covered by SEI grants, so I cannot use them here. That's just one thing to work. Electricity and water is fine. You can sort stuff out there. There's plenty of books. There's plenty of videos on YouTube to help you out. Um, okay. So assuming you've money from the demo sub um, and superstructure work and services, you have a very generous 21,000 for windows and doors, which will get you really good um, windows and doors. We're going for some sliding sash. 
and we're going to get some nice panoramics and a tilt and slide door just to enjoy this wonderful view. Um, internal doors, we're not actually using a lot of internal doors, so there's 7,000 for that. We won't use any of that. Oddly, there's 3,500 euros for skirting boards. I mean, you could. If you really liked your skirting boards, you could use that grant for that. I'd rather use it for, like, the attic. Actually, that's one thing, interestingly. You don't get a grant for insulation because insulation, again, is covered by SEAI. So I'll talk a little bit about insulation, I think, in three more videos. I won't mention that now. Um, for fascia, soffit, and gutters, there's about 4,200 upwards of the grant you can use. For tiling and for wet areas, there's 2,800. For painting and decoration, there's 10,000 euros that you can use. So, if you want to hire people to come in, paint your house, 10,000 euros for it. I'd paint it myself and, I don't know, put on an extension. But anyway, uh, there's 14,000 for the roof. Like, I'm doing my roof and I'm doing the extensions or rebuilding the work here, doing the same roof there. It's coming in around six or 7,000. I'm using corrugated steel. Um, so it's very generous for the roof, for sure. You won't need all of that. For the kitchen also, kitchen units, 7,700. That's pretty good. That covers um, the actual units, you know, the storage units. It also covers white goods. If you want to buy your fridge and your cooker. The bathroom, it covers 2,800. It's probably about four or five basic bathrooms, considering sanitary wear. Um, maybe one generous family bathroom. And if you still have trouble spending all your money, there's 7,000 for landscaping. I mean, we could take down some trees. We have to take down some trees. I don't think we'll have budget for that, but maybe I'll have some left over at the end and we might do that. There's trees that haven't been touched in like 25 years that are kind of leaning over parts of the house. And then the final thing is there's about 10% of the construction cost in fees or 14,000 euros in fees. That is possible. So that, that's the grant. I know. Rooney keeps trying to bite the grant. So assuming we know what the grant is, the Cree Conaha grant, we know the grant limits, what's the application process? Because that's something that a lot of people are very confused about. And to be honest, I was a little bit confused about how to apply and I was a bit put off by everything that was asked. I was like, this is going to cost me thousands before I even apply. But I spoke to Cork County Council, um, to the grant officer. She was very helpful. That would be advice that I would give you is just be as nice and kind as possible to the grant people. And in return, they will be very helpful to you in your process. So she told us exactly what we needed to prove vacancy and dereliction and she asked for quotes i gave them to her she said they weren't good enough she asked it for more quotes and I, I sent back something it wasn't what she asked but i explained that i wanted to do all the work myself so i don't have quotes i have material quotes and she was quite happy with that at that point so talk to the office be polite um they'll guide you through the process okay so for to for the application, you have to prove vacancy. Um, as I kind of mentioned, you can show bills or I got a letter from the estate agent. That's fine. The second thing you need to show is ownership or that you're in the sales process. Ownership could be a deed. If you're in the sales process, that's the estate agent letter. That's what I got as well. If you need planning permission, you need to have that all nailed down before you apply. And if you need planning permission, you need proof that it's granted. Um, the fourth point is about proving it's derelict so the original house i was looking at had no roof and hadn't been lived in 100 years i still needed a qualified person to state it derelict i thought this was ludicrous but it's it's a form it's a it's a it's a step in the form and you got to show so this house i need to prove this was derelict and there was a few things that you could use um what i used is there were some exposed electricity points um, which were dangerous and there was also some structural issues and I had a quantity surveyor complete 
this report and in his opinion he classed it as derelict you can have an architect an engineer a quantity surveyor come and do that um and they are the uh what do they say not the approved person the i don't know i'll flash it up here it's like a professional anyway but you need one of these people to state your house is derelict uh the next point is you need a quote typically this is quote is going to come from a builder it's going to be an estimate of work um i didn't have an estimate i just went to a building provider i put in a big list of all the materials that i needed and i submitted that as a quote i was able to get to that list because i used an application called freecad with a building uh, management module which when i designed the house i was able to count literally down to how many rafters i was going to need how many kind of like floor joists how many panels how many cubic meters of concrete etc that i needed so figure out the way that you, the quote's going to work for you and submit it um bearing in mind that this should be enough to you know put put a contingency but it should be enough to see you through uh the entire project if you have a contingency it would be nice to spend that in landscaping at the end whereas landscaping isn't really necessary so if you need to take that landscaping and put it towards the roof or the bathroom or the kitchen that's the way to work in your contingency um next we had to agree and sign a document that if we sold our house within 10 years we would recoup and pay back the county council some of the money they gave us um on that point before you're allowed to rent the houses i still thought that was a good deal i still thought to get fifty thousand from the government live in the house for five years and sell it and pay back the fifty thousand. i still think that's a really good deal because you're going to double or treble that fifty thousand back easily um easy so i couldn't understand there weren't more people do it now of course you can buy a house and you can rent it so that's even better however if you do this you will need to show um it's been rented for five years and you will have to make sure that it's up to rental standards so some rental standards might be fire blankets things like that you'll have to budget for it which i don't have to okay you send off all the details um it usually takes for me anyway it took about four weeks to get a response there's a few emails looking for some more clarifying information um then they were happy uh they sent the qs out he did a very brief inspection it wasn't structural i asked him actually did he want to go to the attic or inspect anything and he said no he's not it's not a technical inspection he just really wanted to get a feel that the amounts that i had put in my application um would be suitable to bring the house to a habitable standard and he was happy with that so within about a week i think of his viewing we got the letter saying we'd been approved the grant and that was super and they said we can go ahead and we can start to order materials and get cracking um when we're finished which was going to be within about a year they're going to send probably the same guy out and he's going to make sure it is at a suitable standard um we're going to sign the documents and they're going to pay us the the money we we claim for if we're going to rent we will well we're not going to rent here if you were to rent you'll then need to show that the house is on the uh or your 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 tenancy is on the rtb the rental tenancy board and everything's above board with that and every year for five years i think you need to send them proof that it is rented out um You'll have to talk to your mortgage provider also if you are going down that route. We didn't, but um, there has been a few people online that have had issues with the derelict grant with a mortgage. And on one side, the mortgage the provider, the banks don't want to give the mortgage if the house is derelict because it's difficult for them to recoup their own investment if it doesn't happen. They're happy to give you I believe a grant they're happy to give you a mortgage if the house is vacant 
they're just a bit worried if the house is derelict. And the other issue I had seen was who goes first on the deed. Um, if, let's say, you lose your job and the house has to be reclaimed, does the bank have first repayment rights or does the council have first repayment rights? There's one or two people who had that issue. I don't know how that's going to work out. Um, so they'll be the guinea pigs for that. And I think that is about that. My God, 30 minutes. I thought five, six minutes maybe max. Um, but 30 minutes is is. If you want any other answers, if you have questions and want any other answers, um, leave a comment right here. And if I know, I'll answer for you. If I don't know, I'll try and point you in the right direction. And I'll do that freely because I think I want to encourage more and more people to rescue old places like this. Not only will you be left with a really good home, with a really nice bit of Irish history, but in doing so, you will learn a lot about our ancestors, basically, and how they lived, how they worked, and why they did the things they did. I mean, like, the wall here is just full of boulders. Claire, in two weeks, you'll see her footage where she had to clear a path right here. And you see all of the boulders she picked up and put down. I mean, they're just incredible. Huge rocks. And just to think of the people without any power tools or without any heavy machinery, how they built the houses. It's just, I'm blown away by it. And I feel it's a part of our heritage that I don't think we should lose. I love this as well. This foundation, you know. You find a rocky area and you put a lot of stones down, thick stones, and this serves your foundation, not a huge pile of concrete. So, yeah, if I can help any of you uh, to go and buy your own vernacular cottage or farmhouse, let me know. And if you want to see how I'm getting on in mine, doing my renovation, doing all the work myself, why don't you have a look at the other videos I have on this channel? Hope to see you again.